patents aren't what stopped 3D printing from becoming a consumer device. That's pretty much a myth. Okay, so within the wider 3D printing community, almost everybody who's talking about it uh, believes that because the patents for FDM 3D printing ran out in 2009, that made it possible for open source printers like MakerBot and Ultimaker and Prusa to create machines that were low cost and accessible to the average consumer. Um, nah, not really, doesn't seem to be. Uh, the patents for FDM 3D printing ran out in 2009. Uh, MakerBot actually started in January of 2009. Now that's very coincidental and you could say, oh, the patent flipped and they incorporated the next day because they've been working on the machines uh, for a while now. And that's kind of true. There's absolutely no reason to create a startup when you're gonna have patent litigation down the line. But patents as a whole are quite weak forms of enforcement. And if there's actually true innovation happening inside of an industry, uh, patents don't really prevent other people from entering the market, even on something like pushing hot plastic through a tube. Technically, that has existed for 100 years in the form of injection molding or extrusion machines making the filament itself. So the idea that that patent was comprehensive enough to prevent new 3D printers from being cre created is highly unlikely. Apple wasn't able to patent the smartphone. Elon Musk is not able to patent the electric car. They're just things that they happen to implement very well. So if it wasn't patents that was really preventing 3D printers from taking off, what was it? Um, and it seems to be microcontrollers. In the early 2000s, if you were wanting to make a machine, a mechatronic device that had motors and electronics inside of it, you would have to solder together a custom board, put in the ICs, put in the motor controllers, put together chips and resistors and everything else, which is, not impossible, but it was difficult if you weren't an EE focused person. Compared to today, where if you want to connect a few motors to a printer board, well, you plug in some motors and you flash the firmware and there you go. Um, it was much more difficult pre-2007. What happened in 2007 is Arduino became a thing. Arduino was released and continued to get broad acceptance all the way around as a general purpose microcontroller which means that a lot more people were able to get a hold of a chip that was able to easily connect to motors, gears, LEDs to create machines. And since that had existed long enough, by about 2009 when MakerBot and everybody else was coming about, everyone had had time to experiment with Arduino and build things like the ramps board, which is very, was very popular <laughs> in DIY 3D printers. So it wasn't really the fact that patents ran out, that, that didn't hurt, but the fact that microcontrollers became affordable enough and accessible enough that people were able to experiment with them and build things like 3D printers so that the rate of innovation was able to accelerate and 3D printers were a natural application of making your own stuff. If you could make a chip that worked with some motors, you could then make any other parts to then make more parts and so on and so forth. So 3D printing was self-perpetuating. But it wasn't patents stopping 3D printing from ever taking off. It was technological progress. Chips became cheap enough and accessible enough, microcontrollers in the form of Arduino, to where more people were able to do it, so it started to break away. And it all happened to coincide about the time that patents ran out for it, which was a good thing too. If you like this video and you want to see more, please comment and like down below and let us know if there's any type of videos about manufacturing, 3D printing, or product design that you'd like us to dig into a little bit more because uh, we're always looking for more ideas. Have a great day, everybody.